I posted the hard surface modeling video on the Mandalorian helmet and got a lot of questions about how to improve your modeling workflow in Maya. So I'll cover five tips to speed up your modeling workflow in Maya in this video. So jumping right into the first tip, I recommend using the Maya hotbox and marking menus. So for example, here, if I hold spacebar, I can access any one of these menus at any point in the viewport, right? So if I wanted to go ahead and you know hide or unhide or change my heads up display, I don't, it saves me time from going up here and then changing that. More importantly though, if I hold now right click, I have all sets of marking menus. Now, the marking menus you hold probably, and you do this subconsciously, is to get into sub-object mode. And now if I hold shift, right click, look at that. I have every single modeling tool that I would ever need, right? So you can see now I can go ahead and start, you know, using the multi-cut tool, I can bevel this edge here, and you know, I can change this if I wanted to have one subdivision here or you know two segments here and then you know if i wanted to select this now and then maybe do you know a transform component where i move these out on the normal and give this a little bit of an inset here it, you know you absolutely can right so it really really helps with just being able to access essentially everything that's in this modeling toolkit right from this uh, this marking menu, all right? Now, it you get different, they're kind of context sensitive. So if I'm in object mode, you can see holding shift right click, I have various tools. If I go into edge mode, I have um, edge mode specific tools. If I go into vertex mode, I hold shift uh, right click, you can see that I have specific tools for vertices, okay? So these are definitely fantastic tools uh, and to speed up your workflow, okay? Definitely get to the point where you're avoiding going over here to the modeling toolkit or even to, you know, up here to the, the shelf. There's nothing wrong with using these, but, you know, or worst case scenario, I'd say going up here, right? Because you know, you find yourself spending a lot of time moving back and forth between these menus. And if you're just always focused on here, man, you'll be able to just really model very quickly and very efficiently, right? I was able to model this helmet here within a few hours, like no more than three hours, just because I was able to bounce around and do everything that I need to. All right. So the next tip is going to be hotkeys, all right? So for example, along with using marking menus, there's definitely tools to help. One of the, one of the main ones that I like to use is uh, extrude, right? So you'll see if I go here and hit control E, now I don't even need to open up the shortcuts here or the marking menu, I can just do that just by using a hotkey, all right? Now, since I typically, you know, I'm recording videos and tutorials, I stay away from these just so it's harder for people to uh, keep track. So that's why I use uh, at least the marking menus to speed up my workflow. But that is something that you're gonna to wanna to do. In my day job, during the day when I'm modeling and, and doing whatever I need to do, I'm always using hotkeys where I can, all right? Now, you can, of course, put hotkey editors, and here's a nice one that uh, that I'll show you right now, is you can create a custom, uh, a custom hotkey set where you can take it on any machine. Like if you're at school learning, you can uh, save this out into my preferences, okay? Now, I have custom scripts here, and you can put any one of these. So you can see here that I have X-Ray and Wireframe. So if I go to the Runtime Command Editor, I have Wireframe Toggle. So, for example, if I move this over, if I hold Control-Alt-A and in here, you can see that I can go ahead and do a Wireframe Toggle. Sorry, I meant Control-Alt-X. So there, so this is a nice quick way to be able to view the wireframe and, and move around. And I can do this if I, let's say I did wanna change this to Control-Alt-A, I can go ahead and change it and then save that. And then now I change it to Control-Alt-A, you can see, boom, it changes, right? So you can put any custom script in here and I can do Control-Alt-X again and then save that. And then boom, it goes ahead and assigns that to, now you just got uh, to my script. Now make sure though, 
you don't use my default that you specifically set this to default or sorry user okay so again and these are just the keys that you typically find here where you can see wireframe unshaded and x-ray right over here and instead of having to press that all the time boom i'm just constantly you know control alt x alt x doing that right within the viewport to jump between my views and make sure that everything's looking you know as good as uh I possibly can. All right. So hotkeys and the hotkey editor is something that you want to use and that'll save you time. Uh, I will try to drop these scripts down below or link to them where I found these. You can see that the wireframe toggle is just a nice simple script here, Mel script. And then I have the x-ray toggle, uh, same thing that just toggles it here, which is just using a nice simple um, Mel script. All right. Now, if you wanted to do a new one, you would just go here and under this and then create new and you have to make sure that you're in the runtime command editor and then do new here so if i do test and then test right so for the name and uh, the description here so i can go ahead and save this under custom scripts which is down here under custom scripts do i do this here and then for example if i wanted to take this mail script and drop this under this test here i can go to edit paste that right there, save runtime command. Okay, cool. And if I wanted to just give this, um, you know, a random one, um, maybe take this off here, just so I don't overwrite anything else that I'm using. So Alt X, right? We can make sure that we, it works all the same. Okay, let's go on to the next tip. So the next one is adding custom tools to your shelf. Maybe you didn't create a script or you're not using any of the hotkeys. Well, I find myself sometimes for ones that I use few and far in between, like this align tool, if you hold control shift and you're in the right tab or any tab really, like this is my poly modeling one, I can go to display or maybe modify and grab my align tool. So I hold control shift, left click, boom. I can add a shelf, a tool to my shelf here and middle mouse drag, I can throw this kind of with all the other ones of similar uh, function here. So now if I wanted to create like maybe, you know, a cone or something like that here, I can go ahead and kind of move this and put it in position. And if I select this model here and I'm like, oh yeah, let me go ahead and align it. Boom, you can align the tool and then you can just hit this quick align here and then I can just move it and I know that this is kind of centered here on the model all right so that's one way to add a tool the other one that I use a lot um, that I use frequently enough to have it on my shelf is let's see is duplicate special so if I go to edit duplicate special and I can add that to the other tools that I have here all right, and you can always do a save shelf or save all shelves or create a new shelf. Um, you know, there's a lot that you can do here with the shelf. So I would definitely spend some time and kind of customize your workflow there. All right. All right, so that was kind of high level workflow. Um, modeling, another modeling specific one that I use all the time, all the time is constraints. All right, so you can see here in my constraints, like if I had this here where I double click this edge and I go to the transform constraint, I can turn this to edge and then I can start to slide this, you know, in between these two edges here. All right, and it does a pretty good job maintaining that form. Well, an even better way, as you can see, there's surface slide. So if I wanted to move this and kind of move this around and, and it's kind of constraints to the surface. So like a lot of times I'll use surface constraint for offsets. So I'll grab this and grab a vertex here. And then now I can just kind of move this on this um, face here without having to worry about it coming off or moving. It's just constraining to this face. All right. Now, even better than using these constraints here are using the shortcuts. Now, for example, if I wanted to maybe flatten this curvature out, I hold control shift. So let me disable, turn all of these off, control shift, and then look, I can start to kind of flatten this out here. Or if I wanted to go ahead now and grab these edges here and maybe move these out or in, I can hold control middle mouse drag, all right? So control middle mouse drag 
does move on the normal and then control shift does a nice uh, slide on on edge okay so between these two i am constantly be using control shift middle mouse drag or control middle mouse to really kind of get you know the forms that i need and when i'm teaching and i, sh I show students this the first time they're like oh my god once you've shown me that i've never stopped using that and it's almost like you're you know kind of sculpting verts in a way is, is what i like to equate it to so definitely using control shift and control shift middle mouse button will definitely help speed up your workflow okay now the last one uh for this video i would say is the selection tools all right Man, all the time I'm going in here and I gotta select some vertices or some faces. So let's say maybe I wanna just select this here and do an extrusion, right? So I'll select this and you know I have a face selection here and I go to this face selection and I go ahead and select this face, right? And this series of faces and I'm like, um, okay, what's a good way to select these edges now? Well, I can do a control right click and go to edge loop properties and then do um, the actually the other one where I go to two edges and two edge perimeters. And then now I can do an edge perimeter here and then I can do a bevel edge, for example, right? Now, another one that I can do, as you saw, is I do this a lot where I'll select maybe every other edge like this and then I'll hold control right click, go to edge loop utilities and go to edge loop and boom. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to do select every other in Maya, which is unfortunate, but this way at least speeds it up where you can just kind of select a couple of edges or every other edge quickly, and then use the a control right click, oops, went a little bit too fast there, control right click and do edge loop and then to edge loop. And you can see there's all sorts of different selections here. Now, there is also the selection constraint. I like to use angle a lot. I like to use angle a lot because I'll set this, let's say if I wanted to select the inside of my helmet here, and I set this to something a little bit higher, like 50 I can, or 45, I can go ahead and start selecting these and it selects it all the way right up until the edge. Now you can see I can go ahead and bump this up to 60 degrees to select even more, all right? So this makes it for just selecting large scale uh, faces and whatnot. Uh, the other thing that I typically do, so if I turn this off, is maybe select, you know, this here. Or I'll go and select kind of the inside top of the helmet and I'll use the control right click grow selection and then I grow. Or I use shift period or shift comma and you can start to grow that selection and I use that all the time and it just helps and speeds up your workflow when selecting very sp particular things especially when your models start to get much more complex all right so i think that was all the main tips at least right now i mean just got through modeling this i found myself using those techniques quite a bit all all throughout the modeling of this helmet here so i hope that proves uh very helpful and if you guys got any tips throw them down below but uh, we'll go ahead and end it here. As always, like, comment, subscribe if you need anything or uh, any suggestions. Always helpful, guys. Stay, stay safe and I'll see you later.